the pig's life. Unfortunately, other people can take a couple steps back. It's a meeting of minds and meats. Phil Beale is an artisan charcuterie producer. His sausages and air-dried hams are the best in the business, thanks to the quality pork from his herd of Mangalitsa. So this is Blue. He's a three-year-old Mangalitsa boar. He seems relatively happy today. Not too hot, not too cold. And he's probably pushing about 260 kilos at the moment. So, all right to stroke. You don't want him on your lap. <laughs> Fizz is our professional Sussex deer stalker. He also specialises in a premium product, wild venison. Venison is a by-product of deer management, but you end up with an incredible meat which is healthy, wild. Yeah, in terms of a, a quality meat, I don't think you can really get an awful lot better. But they, we're going to queue them first. They have come together to experiment, create something delicious, and we'll be back to find out more a bit later in the last chapter of A Year in the Life of Fallow Deer. First things first, we need to find our venison. The pigs are sort of a sure thing. There are just a few days before the end of the fallow buck season, but this stalk is different to all the others. This is personal. This is the last couple of days of the fallow season, and this is a freezer filling stalking session. Um, that is my sole objective today, is to get some venison to get in the freezer, make into burgers, make into some of our smoked venison. Um, which is where we started. Which is where we started. He may have shot and processed hundreds of deer since we first joined him at the pre-season barbecue, but anything that falls today is destined for the same fireball, and then some. Luckily, we come across a likely lad within a few hundred yards from where we parked up. The good-sized young buck is perfect, but a shot would not be. Fizz has to wait until he knows it's safe. The low light is no issue for the Swarovski Z8i. So yeah, at least the freezer's not going to be totally empty over the summer months now. 
he is. He really is an absolute belter. <clears throat> now, when the word of the moment in the food industry is provenance, it doesn't get better than this. We have our wild venison and we know exactly so, where yeah, it no, comes um, from. From a venison point of view, that's absolutely bang on. We'll get some really nice loins, get some steaks and smoked venison out the haunch muscles. Um, what we do is the rest of it, this tends to go into burgers and we also make venison chorizo. Um, but yeah, no, happy with that as, a, as an animal for the, for the freezer, that's, that's, that's really good. But we'll just quickly unload the gun and bleed that out before we do anything else. When we first spotted the deer, it wasn't safe because it stood against the hedge. Um, as it came down the hedgerow, it's stopped and literally got this nice bit of bank here behind it. It literally stopped us around here. So just give us a classic sort of second, two second opportunity there to get a safe shot. As we have still got an hour of deer time left, we leave this animal to pick it up shortly and we continue on a circuit of the ground. Yeah, looking forward to a few months, three months break. At the same time, by the time 1st of August comes around, I'll be chomping at the bit to get back out in the woods, I think. Just don't move too much, don't. lead deer, there's a doe, and there's a couple of bucks behind, three bucks behind. The dawn chorus is a wonderful soundtrack to the morning, with Fizz's first cuckoo of the year making its presence felt. Uh, always forget about cuckoos until one pipes up like that, it sounds pretty amazing. Certainly not too jaded by his journey, so it sounds pretty loud. We spot more fallow on the other side of the valley, but they're off. And so now are we. Two weeks later and we're in the chiller to butcher our buck. Trends are changing. The days of you know, game being hung for a month or more, I think, are long gone. And I think it's also that's a move, partly moving away from this sort of game being strong tasting, which I think is something which over the past has often put, you know, has put people off, particularly people who maybe would try it, have this idea that game's very strong, venison's very strong, which it's not. Fizz is processing all of this for his friends and family, and some needs to go to Phil at Beale's farm. What I'll show you now there is a little trick. So what I do is just pop in the tripe knife in there, that little cut we made, you can see it's just basically it's resting now on the skin on the inside of the coat and then we'll just start to literally run down the back and we'll go right down to the neck. So when it comes to pulling it off, you've only got half the friction if you're trying to do it like we are without any kind of mechanical aid. It just makes it a lot quicker. This is the moment of truth. You can lay this down on a table. I personally quite like to do it hanging up because it gives you, it's easier to basically get work around it rather than having to kind of toss it from one side to the next on the table. The key thing is to follow the bone. That's just the basic, what we call primal cuts and that's taking us, what, about 30 minutes, something like that. I've actually broken a bit of a sweat. Normally it takes me 35. <laughs> the buck dealt with, the next stop is Beale's farm. In here we've got the whole neck muscles, all the coppers. We've got small hams, whole loins. Fizz is a bit of a foodie and a wine buff, so he has been keen to explore all sorts of delicious ways of using his venison. Yeah, so, so far we've been you know, experimenting with a few different products. Yeah, we've tried with salamis and spicy slicing chorizo and obviously the cooking chorizo, which is, works perfectly, I think. Works really well, yeah. uh, obviously, for me, working with a new meat, as you said, you know, venison is very, very lean. 
So it's finding how to layer the flavours and how to get it all balanced out. I think we're going in the right direction. So these were just drip dry up here. Over the last 12 months, he's worked with Phil to develop products to bring to market. Want to know more? Watch this space. This is not about high volume food production. It's science and art combined to produce an exceptional air dried sausage or piece of meat. Mangal eaters are incredibly fatty pigs and that allows me to free up a little bit of fat and the thought of that going in with a prime cup of venison is just, you know, for me it's a bit of a marriage, a match made in heaven, so to speak. Asking people to spend that little bit more on their food is difficult. Getting them to understand the time and effort put into delivering a quality product is difficult. But when the focus is becoming food provenance, surely deer stalkers, wild venison and other game meats are first in the queue. What goes in to getting that piece of meat into a butcher shop and onto the customer's plate, like what it takes to get a salami just to have a couple of slices, I think that appreciation really needs to be reinstalled to the general public again. And when I do get to talk to people, you know, they're really enthusiastic when they realise how much work and effort. And all of a sudden the overpriced view is starting to look at a different way. It's, well, it's not overpriced if you don't buy as much. And if you've got something of good quality, you don't need as much. For more information about Swarovski Optics, go to uk.swarovskioptic.com and if you fancy trying some air-dried sausages and meats, go to bealsfarmcharcuterie.com.